Hello, my name is Dave and thanks for joining me. Uh, today we're going to talk about roof racks. I've had a request from one of the subscribers to talk about roof racks and how to fit them, etc, etc. And I think the most the problem that most people have is that the jackaroo doesn't have any gutters. So they buy a, a roof rack that fits on gutters and there isn't nowhere to fasten them to. So you've got to make mounts. Um, so let's, um, let's talk about that. I've got a bit of a script here so you're going to have to bear with me. Roof racks. What to buy, where to buy it? Well, what to buy? So roof racks come in two flavours, aluminium and steel. I've got to make a point here that it's aluminium, not aluminium. We're not American, we're not the idiots from over the pond that can't speak properly. Aluminium is what it is. It's not aluminium, okay? Rant over. So why do we have two different materials? Generally, it's for weight saving. Aluminium is much lighter than steel, but the trade-off to lightness isn't anywhere near as strong as steel. That's what the problem is. So, for lightness we use aluminium, for strength we use steel. How do we choose? Well, much depends upon the use you have for a roof rack. All cars have roof weight limit, and I'm told that the long wheelbase jackery weight is around 80 kilograms, but I have never seen that written down officially. There's nothing in the handbook, there's nothing in the workshop manual. I have seen a 50 kilogram with an off-road rating of 25 kilogram, but I wasn't sure what that model was that was for, so that could have just been a made-up figure as well. So until I see it written down officially, I'm a bit sceptical. ProRack, an online entity, state that it's 75 kilograms, and the Rhino Rack state that it's 67 kilograms when you have two bars, and 100 kilograms for three bars. Now that makes a lot more sense. 67 kilograms is a bit of a strange number to guess, so I'm suspecting that they've got it right. So I'm going to give you a bit of a scenario here. In fact, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you what it says in the handbook about loading the vehicle. Um, just as a side note, as a matter of interest, the GVM for the long wheelbase Jackaroo is 2,600 kilograms. It's written in the handbook if you're not sure. If it's the short wheelbase, it's 2,500 kilograms. And the curb weight is 1975 with an automatic trans transmission and 1955 with a manual transmission. That's the diesel. If you work out the difference between 1975 and 2,600, that gives you a, a GBM of around about 625 kilograms. Well, that's exactly 625 kilograms. And you've got to remember that everything you add to your car, like a bull bar or a roof rack, all add to the GVM. It's the overall weight of the car, the gross vehicle mass. So anything you put on your roof is counted as GVM. Anything that's attached to your tow ball at the back is GVM. Okay? So just bear that in mind. So that will... Uh, oh, let me read to you first what it says about roof racks. It says, it must be understood that the roof rack loads after alters the handling characteristics of a vehicle due to a change in the centre of gravity. Obviously, it makes it higher. When carrying loads on a roof, avoid abrupt swerving or sharp steering manoeuvres. Remember to take the roof rack load into account when determining the GVM, as your vehicle cannot carry any more just because it's stored on the roof. That's what it says. There's no figures or anything. So let's keep going. What are the choices? Steel or aluminium, I reckon. And flat or with raised sides as a cage type. I've got a raised side one and it's steel. And in our case, two or three roof mounts. I don't know how many vehicles have two or three roof mounts. So we've got the ad additional um, complications of, of the number of mounting bars that we have. So I've got three. And three is the best way forward, I think. So you, uh, the, mounting, the mounting points on the Jackaroo. There's one mounting point on the back. There's the second one in the centre, and there's the third one. And as you can see, they're bolted on. Now, bolted on mounting points are great. They give you added security, and once you've got your roof rack on, that's, that's that. It's pretty much on there, and that, you're done. It's not as easy to mount, though, because you've got to have, you've got to have cross bars to help mount it. Where to buy from? Well, that, oh, that is open to a lot of variables. It depends on your budget or the use you need a rack for. Many people use roof racks, flat roof racks for roof tents and bear in mind that the roof tents are built for two people. 
if you are using both a roof tent and then have to combine the weight of the rack, the mounting bars, the tent and the people, for example, if you have an aluminium flat rack that say weighs 35 kilograms, plus the roof bars that say another 10 kilograms, and the top rooftop tent are say around 50 kilograms, this is best case scenario and I'm only guessing, so you're already at 95 kilograms, which is under the 100 grams load limit. But what happens when you go to bed? Let's say the average cu uh, couple are 80 kilograms and 60 kilograms, plus the mattress and the bedding, you're looking at around 150 kilograms over the weight limit. That is likely the best case scenario. So I, I, I know you're not driving around when you've got your roof tent up, but the point is that that roof tent is on there all the time, so you're always carrying 95 kilograms of weight. You can go budget like I did. At the time I was buying all sorts of things, I was trying to repair the car, so I didn't have a lot of spare cash, so I bought the budget. I went to King's and I bought a Prado 150 rack. They manufacture that, it's quite he heavy, but it fulfills what I needed it to f needed it for. It's a gutter mount rack. If you feel the weight of the gutter mounts, then I reckon that the three bars that my son made for me to, to, to put on the roof don't outweigh the weight of the gutter mounts in the box because they're really heavy. Tradesman's racks will build and fit a rack for you for around $1,300 to $2,000 depending on what material you want. There are other companies that sell off, off the shelf racks such as Rhino Racker would help you to decide what is best. They aren't cheap, but you are paying for their service. Utilise them, ask questions, get your money's worth. If you go budget like I did and purchase the King's Prado 150 rack, you will need to make some roof bars. And you have several things to consider with this. The material the bars are made of, can they be welded? More to the point, can you weld them? They need to be level so they can be made at different heights. So the front rack, front crossbar is a different height to the rear crossbar and the centre crossbar because of the shape of the roof. And they all need to be level at the top when you put your roof rack on. The mounting holes need to align correctly for the mounting points and how will the rack attach to the mount? Will I need to paint them? If you're aluminium probably not, if they're steel you probably will. So you can see there are a lot of questions to answer and I've and fulfill if you go down the budget path. What would I do now? If I was buying a new roof rack knowing what I know, what would I do? Given that I run a budget bar with homemade mounts and I have for several years and it does what I require, the only improvement I could make is lightness. If I were purchasing a roof rack knowing what I do now, I would buy a flat aluminium rack. Why? Because it's hugely lighter. The cage sides just add more weight and you can strap anything down to a flat rack. The only disadvantage I can see is that there is nowhere to flow firewood when you're out searching for firewood when you're camping. I'm going to look at getting some roof bars made up to sell in both aluminium and steel. It may take some time to get them engineered and made up, but once made, I will sell them from the channel here. I hope this helps everybody. So this has been a preliminary video on roof racks. I will show the bars, how to make the bars, what you can use, how to do it at a later date. I can't just take my roof rack off, start you know, showing you all the bits and pieces, but I will at some point show the, the roof bars being made and being fitted onto the car and how to go about it but it might be a little while away in the meantime if you have a roof rack already and you're wondering how, how to fit it well that was interesting i've just met a fellow photographer who's in a uh, four-wheel drive <laughs> turns out he lives in the next street to me i never even knew him so that's fantastic um yeah going back to uh uh roof racks it, the, the big, I've just, in fact, the chap I've just met had a flat aluminium rack on his car and he said he had problems getting it mounted. But the only downside I can see to having a flat roof rack is the fact you can't just chuck firewood on there and drive back to your campsite. That's the only thing. Apart from that, um, everything else is lighter and better, I reckon. So that's what I would do. I would go with. I would go with a lightweight roof rack if I had that choice again. Thanks for joining me and I hope you got something out of this and hopefully I'll be able to do a video in the near future. Thanks a lot and see you out there.